Hey folks, it's me, Demotro, here in my combo classroom, and I figured it's time for another bonus video on this channel. I haven't put a typical horizontal video on this channel in about a year, although I've released many shorts, many live streams, and many main episodes on my other combo class channel. I do like using the main videos on this channel to share some other fun facts that you may not know. And today I want to talk about irrational numbers. Now, an irrational number is a number which, let's say irrationals will give an I for, that cannot be written as a fraction of two integers. Integers being like whole numbers, including the zero and negatives as possibility. With a rational number, we'll call R being the opposite of an irrational, that can be written as one of those fractions. And one of my recent episodes on my combo class channel was about how we can prove certain numbers are in one of these categories. Of course, proving something was rational could be very easy, like proving four halves is rational. We're like, yeah, we shrink that to its simplest form, two over one, those are integers, that's rational. However, if we look at a number like square root of two, it's much harder, but we can prove using some techniques that it must be irrational. And irrational numbers are also the ones that end in an infinite non-repeating decimal, not only in base 10, but in any typical positional numeral base, base six or 12 would do this as well, irrational numbers have an infinite non-repeating thing after a point. I would like to tackle a question that many people have asked me. Now, I have mentioned that the numbers pi and e, which are two classic irrational constants, add up to a number that has not been proven to be irrational or rational. I mean, it's very likely that they add up to something irrational, given that they both are, and there's no reason they should be connected in a way that adds up to some rational fraction. However, it hasn't been proven and is technically unknown. And some people ask me, how is that even possible for two irrational numbers to add to a rational? How would that be possible for two numbers of that form to add to one of that? And so let's begin with that question. What happens if we add two irrational numbers? Now, what we're gonna do here is let's make a little chart where we have the possibility of one of the numbers being irrational versus rational, and the possibility of the other being one of those. And we're gonna see what happens in each of these combinations when we add them together. Now, a rational plus a rational will always be rational. We know that if we add one number that could be a fraction with another that could be a fraction, there's a way to add those two fractions into another fraction of integers. However, if we have a rational plus an irrational, that always adds to an irrational. That would take a slightly more complicated proof to demonstrate, but any number that's like two plus some irrational thing like the square root of three, or if that was three plus the cube root of five, any rational plus irrational will always be irrational. So how about an irrational plus an irrational? Well, it turns out that can go either way. There are irrational numbers that added with another are also irrational, but we can find examples where they add to a rational number as well. And we'll start with some really trivial examples. Like if I have the square root of two plus the negative square root of two, that's zero and that's two irrationals adding to a rational. But we could even make it less trivial by saying like I had five plus the square root of two and that's one of my numbers plus three minus the square root of two. And in this case, they still cancel out, leaving us with a five plus three. So that leaves a rational as well. And there are many examples of numbers where we could have some inverse of them included in another number that we're adding, even if they're not direct inverses, that must add up to something rational. Now, 
that not only tells us that there is some chance until it's proven otherwise that pi plus e could be rational, but it tells us other things as well. Like one interesting fun fact I didn't share in my episode about those things was that pi plus e could be irrational and pi times e could be irrational, but it's been proven that at least one of these is definitely irrational, even though they're both unknown. So either they're both irrational, which would be quite likely, or one of them could be rational, but not both, which is a funny thing that's been proven, but given that that relates to pi times e, what if we change this chart a bit and look at if we're taking these numbers multiplied by each other instead of added together. Well, a rational times a rational is always rational because we could take a fraction times another fraction and express that as its own fraction of integers. It can also be proven that a rational number times an irrational number is always going to be irrational, like a multiple of an irrational number that is that times some fraction of integers will still be irrational. So we know things like three halves times pi will be irrational. But what about an irrational times an irrational? Once again, we have, it could go either way. An irrational times an irrational could certainly be another irrational number. However, it also can result in something rational. For example, as one trivial case, if we multiply square root of two by itself, both of those are irrational, but they result in the rational number two. We can even multiply things that are related to the reciprocal of their own form to sort of eradicate that in the answer, or many other ways that we can multiply two numbers together that even if they're both irrational might generate a rational. Now, let's actually go past our somewhat trivial examples to see if we can find a more complicated version of two numbers adding or multiplying where they're both irrational, but it results in a rational number. Well, let's use addition for here. If you want your own challenge, you could try and find a less trivial multiplication version. But for addition, if we want to create two numbers that we know are irrational, but add up to a rational number, we could take some number we know is a fraction, like one third. It has an infinite repeating decimal like 0 0.3 is one third, and we can create two irrational numbers that add up to that. Like if I make A 0 0.3 and then one zero, three and then two zeros, three and then three zeros, and etc. that has a pattern that never repeats periodically, and so we know that must be irrational. And I can create a B that will also be irrational by filling in those gaps, putting zeros where we had threes and threes where we had zeros. And these two numbers are both irrational, but they will add up to one third. Now let's look at other operations like exponentiation. And although I'll save most of this for a future episode topic, I want to note now that it has been proven in what's known as the Gelfand-Schneider theorem that if we have some number a that is an algebraic number of some form, algebraic numbers include all the rational numbers and some of the irrational numbers because they're defined as being numbers that can be the solution of a basic form of polynomial equation, like x squared equals four tells us that x is two, but if I have x squared equals two, the solution is x is the square root of two, and that is also an algebraic number because that sort of equation was one of the basic polynomial type, and although it's irrational, it's a solution to that. 
Now, if A is some form of algebraic number that isn't zero or one, and it's raised to some power B, that is an algebraic irrational number, then it's guaranteed that the answer will not only be irrational, but a category known as transcendental, a subcategory of irrational numbers that are non-algebraic and irrational. And this doesn't tell us about certain popularly asked things like pi to the pi, because that doesn't fit being an algebraic number. Pi itself is transcendental. And another common example is that this number, the square root of two to the power of root two is known as the Gelfond Schneider constant. And this number does turn out to be transcendental, but it raised to the power of two equals two, which doesn't break that rule because a transcendental base number wasn't part of our original abilities that we were allowing. But in this case, you can try and construct an interesting proof that this number must result in the chance that an irrational to an irrational power can be rational. Beyond this, there are many other similar topics we could cover in future episodes, but that's probably enough for this bonus video. Make sure you're also tuned into my main combo class channel where I'm gonna be wrapping up grade negative two with one more long mathematical episode and then one finale sort of episode that will be a documentary about this grade negative two. And then before too long, it'll be time for grade negative three. Thank you for watching. Check the description for more cool links and I'll see you again soon.